Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing another foundation review for you. <sighs> but this time it's on one that I think is possibly one of the best foundations I've ever tried in my life. So I'm very, very excited to share it with you. It is the Estee Lauder Double Wear Nude Foundation. This is the Water Fresh Makeup. This is in the shade 1N0 Porcelain. That's the one that I'm going to talk about today. This retails for $58 AUD or £33.50 in the UK or $42 US dollars obviously in the US. You get 30 mils with it, it's a standard amount and it comes in this beautiful glass frosted bottle um, with a gold cap. Now the only thing is that this doesn't have a pump, however I'm probably the only person in the world that wasn't disappointed by that, in fact I was thankful. Um, for reasons I will get to later. On the bottle here it says that it has SPF 25. In Australia I think there are stricter rules around sun care and what they can claim. So quite often products in Australia and New Zealand I think as well um, have slightly lower SPF ratings and quite often you'll see products with just a wee sticker put over them um, which lowers the SPF rating. But here it's printed on the bottle as SPF 25 but I do know in the US and the UK this is listed as SPF 30. And the sunscreens that are in this are both chemical and physical sunscreens. Now this doesn't have any added synthetic fragrance, which is blimmin' awesome. I hate when foundations have fragrance in them. It's impossible really for it to be odorless entirely, but it doesn't have a very strong sort of paint or chemically scent. It's very, very subtle. Um, it's just got a little bit of obviously whatever the rest of the ingredients smell like. But it's certainly not noticeable on the face at all and it certainly doesn't have that strong odour like some, uh, like MAC Studio Fix for example. Now this one is a water based foundation, it has quite a high water um, content which is why it's called the Water Fresh Makeup and it's very very liquidy, if you shake the bottle you can hear it shaking like water. But it does have silicones in it, it's not a silicone free foundation, I think a lot of people think it is silicone free because it's water based, um, but it still has silicones in it, it's just not as high a concentration so it's predominant base is water. The coverage on this is definitely light to medium and it can build to a pretty solid medium. You're not going to get full coverage out of it, but for me a medium coverage is perfect for every day, so I really like that. The finish on this one is part of why I think this is one of my favourite foundations I've ever discovered. Um, I mean granted I'm wearing a lot of highlighter and beautiful glowy products on top of this today, but you'll see in the demonstration shortly how beautiful the finish looks on the skin. It's like a dewy satin where it's not so dewy where it looks greasy but it definitely is more than just a satin it just looks like you're glowing from within it's so healthy it imitates skin texture the longevity on this one i haven't found it to be as long wearing as its little cousin uh, the original double wear but surprisingly it does stick around a lot longer than i thought for a water-based foundation i do lose a bit from my violin chin rest of course that just happens with every single product i own as well as like if you're wearing your glasses it's going to rub off where that is also because this one is estee lauder it's not cruelty free so just keep that in mind now we get to the shades so as i said earlier i'm wearing shade 1n0 porcelain which I don't believe they make this shade in the original Double Wear. I could be wrong, but I haven't seen that shade here in Australia. When I reviewed the original Double Wear, I tried 1C0, which is Shell, and that is a cooler toned version of about the similar kind of depth. They do make 1C0 Shell in this Double Wear Nude formula, um, but obviously that one is a lot more cool toned. This is meant to be neutral. I would call it neutral cool though. It definitely still leans a little bit on the cool side, but I really, really like that because it's not overly pink. Now, when we look at the shades, it's a little bit different in different countries. That's often the way with Estee Lauder. I've found that different countries will get a certain amount of uh, shades. The most shades I could find on a website overseas was in the UK. There are 30 sh there are 33 shades on offer in the UK, which is a lot, and that's really great to see. In Australia, there's only 24 shades offered, and in the US, it's a lot less. There's only 12 shades. That was on Sephora, um, which is unacceptable. <laughs> they should have the same amount of shades as the UK. In fact, everywhere should have the same amount of shades, um, but particularly the US. What I did notice, though, was that even though Australia has twice as many shades, they only go up to a level 5 in depth. Um, which is a sort of more like medium to deep sort of shade as opposed to an ultra dark shade. So they basically don't cater for the very deep skin tones in Australia, which is ridiculous because we have women here that are very, very dark. But in the US, they do go to that very deep. I think it's a level seven is their deepest shade and it looks pretty dark. Not Nima Tang dark. I haven't seen her do a review on it and I struggled to find any women of color that were a similar sort of depth to her skin tone they have tried it so they definitely do go to some deeper shades 
but just not quite as much as something like Fenty Beauty or Lancome or um, Cover FX and things like that. In terms of the depth of the two porcelain shades, one N0 and one C0, they're borderline. Um, for me right now, it's a really good shade. It's about an NC10, but if you're even more fairer than me, then I don't think this one will work for you, sadly. I do think there's room for them to add at least one more neutral shade, like a shade lighter, like 0N0. That would be awesome. So now we're going to swap over to the natural lighting side where I will do a demonstration and I'll talk a little bit about the tools I like to use with this, uh, the primers and things that I like to use. I'll show you some swatches against other foundations in my collection as well as a wear test. So because this foundation is water based I actually found that sometimes using no primer was perfectly fine, just a good moisturiser um, and it went on really really well. But if I did feel like I needed a primer, the best one was my silicon free primer, the Hangover Primer by Too Faced. Um, I did try it with the Hourglass Veil Mineral Primer which is a silicon based primer. Just because there are some silicons in this product but I found that it caused way 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 too much slip and it really, the foundation really struggled to grip to that product. So if you're going to use a primer I'd use a water based primer, something that's basically just a moisturiser or just go in with your moisturiser. So I'm just going to put on a little bit of my Too Faced primer today. And then in terms of tools that I like to use, I tried it with my hands with a round top kabuki brush. This one's by EXO Beauty, it's my favourite. And I also tried it with a beauty sponge. The sponge doesn't work with this one. <laughs> Normally sponge is my favourite way to apply foundation, but not for something that's so liquidy and watery like this. Um, I think it looks beautiful with hands, it blends in really really nice like that, or with a really dense sort of kabuki brush. It can sometimes be a little bit harder to blend on the nose with the brush, so sometimes I'll use my brush and then just tap around the nose to kind of really mush it into your skin. Um, but it is a little bit less messy doing it that way as opposed to blending it all in with your hands. As I said at the start of this video, um, I'm probably the only one that prefers that this doesn't have a pump and that is because it's so liquidy. If this had a pump, I feel like I would go to pump it out of my finger and it would just run everywhere, there'd be too much product. So I love the fact you can just put it on like that, give it a shake and then a little bit comes out. It's so easy, it's really not that fussy, I think people get a little bit overboard about the whole lack of pump thing. The only other better way they could do it is maybe with a dropper, but I do have some foundations with a dropper and I'm not the biggest fan. Um, I agree that a product like MAC Studio Fix Fluid, which doesn't come with a pump, that is better with a pump because it's a thicker, kind of more silicone-y formula, but a liquidy one like this works really well. And then with my brush, I like to apply it in kind of little mini downward strokes, so I try to avoid buffing this in. It's just not that kind of formula that buffs in, it needs to be just kind of pressed and stroked into the skin. This, I imagine that this would go on well with a paddle foundation brush as well. I just don't really have one in my brush kit right there. <laughs> because it does give a really nice light medium coverage, um, I'm going to go in with some concealer. I'm using my NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealer in Shanti. And this is one of my like least obtrusive concealers, and I mean that in the sense that you don't have to use much product to get the coverage because I really want you guys to see how the actual foundation wears throughout the day, not the concealer. And just a little bit under my eyes. Then I'm just going to lightly set my T-zone with my Models Prefer um, Mineral Finishing Veil. Because this foundation it does have a kind of dewy satin finish, I just want to take away a little bit of the shine just on the centre portion of my face and set the concealer under my eyes as well. So that's what it looks like with the rest of my makeup on. So it is currently nine o'clock in the morning, so I will check in with you guys in six hours time. Oh, actually it might need to be a little bit before that. I have a class from like two to four. So I'll check in sometime in the afternoon and then again at 12 hour mark as well. And here we have the product swatch next to a few of my other favorites as well. So this is the Estee Lauder Double Wear Nude in 1N0 Porcelain. This is MAC Studio Fix Fluid in NC10. And this is MAC Pro Longwear Nourishing Waterproof Foundation in NW13. This is one of my best matches right now. This is Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless in 102 Fair Porcelain. This is Too Faced Born This Way Foundation in Swan. And this is Makeup Forever Ultra HD Foundation in Y205. And this is about a good winter shade for me. 
So what you might be able to notice is that even though this is classed as a neutral foundation, um, it definitely has a little bit of a coolness to it. It's certainly not um, a bang on neutral shade, but it definitely isn't pink pink. So I really love that undertone for me, a nice true neutral cool. So it's now 1.30, so this makeup's been on for four and a half hours. I do have to rush off the class, so I thought I would do a check-in now. It's still looking pretty good. It has worn a little bit off my nose, just because I've had a bit of a runny nose lately. I've been not so well. Um, but everywhere else, where I wouldn't normally touch my face, is looking really good. I don't look overly shiny or anything, I just still have that nice healthy glow to my skin. So it's now 9 o'clock at night and I am very, very tired, very keen to get to bed. So this is what it is, <laughs> shut up you, um, this is what it is looking like. Um, a little bit, like a little bit of sheen, but it is, as I say, a satiny, glowy foundation, so that's to be expected. But it hasn't gotten like overly oily to the point where it's like not wearable or anything. You can see, oh, my concealer's rubbed off my pimple because I was accidentally playing with it, which was naughty. You can see it's rubbed off a bit there, as I had before. I didn't touch up or anything. It actually, it hasn't held up as well today as it did other days. I'm not 100% sure why, but it definitely, like, doesn't look bad or anything. It just seems to have rubbed off a little bit more than it normally would. But that's okay, I think it still looks really nice. So in my opinion, I think this foundation is best for dry to normal combo skin. I think maybe if you have super oily skin, it won't work so well. I did watch Sharon Farrell's review on this and she has very oily skin um, and she found this a real hot mess it didn't hold up on her at all so i think if you have really really oily skin um, just based on the reviews that i've watched um, i don't think it's quite the formula for you but i think the original double wear is a lot more suitable for oily skin so if you have oily skin i'd try that one but i think if you have dry to normal combo skin i think you'll be fine my skin's normal it leans a little bit comboy at times um, but yeah generally it's quite normal so those are all my thoughts on this product. If you have any other further questions about it that I didn't get to answer, do put them in the comments because I do reply to nearly all of my comments. So I'd love to answer your questions. If you found this review helpful, then don't forget to give it a big thumbs up for me. It does really help me out and lets me know that you enjoy these videos. If you missed my last foundation review, I will pop it up there so you can go have a watch and you can subscribe by clicking on my face down here. And until next time, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.